What a performance from the world champ to complete that set. What a time to be, Kyle Chalmers. He joins us now. Hello, congratulations. Welcome to the show, champion. Must feel nice to get that set together. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, it's been something that uh, I've been working for for a very long time. Um, I've been to four world championships now. That's only the second time I've had the opportunity to swim the 100 freestyle, though. And uh, last time I missed it by a very fractional margin. So it's um, it's driven me and motivated me for quite some time now. So to stand on the top of the podium is a memory I'm going to remember forever. Well, I'm, I'm going to make that podium even higher for you because it just astounds me when people like you achieve what you have achieved. So just to paint the picture of it, if all 7.9 billion people on the planet <laughs> lined up dived into the water and swam 100 metres, you would win. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a good way to look at it. That's why I gave it the double cobras on the labour of afterwards, because uh, I, I was thinking exactly that. Now, Kyle Chalmers, you know that I love you, mate. Uh, my nickname for you is Shiraz, because I think you're getting better with age, you're getting quicker. But what the hell are you thinking putting some Copa Mundiles, some Adidas Copa Mundiles footy boots on and going for a kick out at Lincoln South Eagles over the weekend? We were worried about you. And is it true that you injured yourself? What happened? No, I wouldn't say it was injured, mate. As you can see, that's some pretty good footage there. That's uh, I was only out there for five minutes, so the cameras did well to pick it up. But, um, <laughs> but I, uh, I rolled my ankle. I'm not used to wearing football boots, so I kind of... Uh, Fell over on it, but no, no, no injury. I had it taped, so it was fine. Um, I think it just scared me more than anything, and I thought it wasn't worth the risk, so <laughs> ran back off. Um, hadn't planned on going out there, actually. It got to the first half, I sat on the bench coaching with my mates, and then the, the club president came down in the third quarter and said, oh, you know, you got to get out there, mate, have a crack. So I went out there for five minutes, and that was that was my day done. <laughs> Straight back and into the Bunnings trade outfit, I can see. Oh, I'm <laughs> surprised you didn't get roughed up because there's some rough heads out at Port Lincoln, mate. They would have come after you big time. Were you a little bit nervous? I was very nervous, and the, the club we were playing against wasn't overly keen on me playing. It was a top-of-the-table clash, um, so I knew where I stood in that. that. But um, when I went out there, I made sure I really sucked up to the opposition player, gave him a big handshake, had a good chat. Um, so he looked after me for those couple of minutes I was out there. We know you love your footy, Kyle. You've often spoken about your affinity for Port Adelaide, especially. I know you did an interview a few years ago where you said you'd even love to maybe pull on the teal one day. How are the next few weeks looking for you? Because I'd imagine you're looking to keep a bit of September free in case they go deep. Yeah, well, the boys should go pretty deep. So um, after my little ankle roll, I'm feeling pretty good by what day is it today? Tuesday. I feel good to go again by Saturday, I reckon. So uh, <laughs> I have to get the all clear from my coach. But, no, nah, I think footy for me is um, probably a thing of the past. It's, uh, it's always been a big passion and love. And for me to go back home on the weekend, uh, the, you know, I won a, won a premiership in the under-13s there. 10 years ago uh, or 12 years ago now, it's quite some time ago, um, but to pull the Guernsey back on with all my mates and as a country kid, kind of like Fitzy, you know, you know, you idolise those A-grade players at your footy club and most of those guys are now playing B-grade footy there, so I was able to play with um, my idols on the weekend. Cole, it's uh, interesting that you've got your Bunnings tradie outfit on because Julie and Linda did that lovely story the other day on you enhancing your mental freshness by going and working with a mate as a tradesman. And, like, it wasn't a, a one-day thing either, was it? It's, uh, like, is that part of your, your plan to sort of, you know, keep yourself anchored or freshen yourself up? Yeah, I'm doing it two days a week now, and I've been doing it for probably, yeah, the last five or six months now, which has been... Um, it's been awesome for me, and I think it's a question that's always scared me is what I'm going to do post-swimming, and it's a question you get asked quite frequently is what are you going to do after swimming, and I... I tried studying. It wasn't quite for me. Um, I got into the reptile reptile hobby there for a while. Um, that was quite demanding. So for me now, yeah, labouring on a building site a couple of days a week is is the best and something that um, you know eventually I will move home to Paul Lincoln and I'll I'll play footy on the weekends. Uh, go to work. I reckon they work a pretty good shift in terms of seven till three pm. So I'll be able to go fishing in the afternoons and live a pretty relaxed lifestyle. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you knew you were swimming quick when you went to the Worlds, didn't you? You were in the, obviously in the right frame, frame of mind as well. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, had the relay on day one. I swam a pretty pretty sharp time in the relay. The boys got over the line for the first time uh, in a very long time at the World Championships. So I think it's 22 years since we'd won that event. Oh, sorry. Actually, that's a lie. They won it in Shanghai in 2011. <laughs> so it had been a while. But, um, but to be a part of that gold medal winning relay um, was special because 2015 I did it. We, uh, we missed the final. 2017 got DQ'd. 2019 got a bronze medal, got a silver medal last year, and then finally stand on the top of the podium with my relay mates is is always the best feeling for me. But um, yeah, it was definitely in the best shape I've been in a very long time, uh, both mentally, physically, and, and emotionally. I just I had a great week. And Kyle, talk about that week and uh, obviously the individual performance is what it is. Uh, what about the team? Bags of medals, plenty of gold medals, more gold medals than the USA. And how's that? You know, looking for Paris next year. It's incredible. I'm a, I'm a pretty big swimming fan. Uh, obviously, I do the sport, but I'm also a fan, so I love sitting there watching the um, the events and watching my teammates compete, and there's so many amazing talents coming through and young talents, so I think they're going to have um, learned a lot from this year, and they're only going to be better for it again next year. So for me, um, I'm excited to see how these guys progress, and I'm excited to be one of the kind of veterans of the team now, probably guiding them and um, hopefully impacting their careers a little bit. Mate, you're, you're one of the most exciting swimmers to watch of all time because, Kyle, you like to start slow. Now, you hit the wall seventh at the 50-metre mark and to watch you come home, I mean, do you... I want to know, do you have any idea, like, have you got a good idea where you're placed when you're hitting that wall for the first time? Well, there's a few things I'll say on that. So seventh, oh, it depends how you look at it. I turned equal seven, so it's pretty much... Last, because there's only eight in the race. <laughs> um, but then secondly, one of my great mates who swims in Brazil, he messaged me the other day saying exactly that, that you're um, the most exciting swimmer to watch in the world. And I, and I replied back to him saying, I'm not a swimmer, I'm a performer. <laughs> um, I was out there having put on a show for everyone. But um, for me, uh, that's probably just making excuses for my poor start. Um, but I do swim with my eyes closed, so I had no idea where I was at the first 50. And wow. I knew that I was kind of in striking range, but for me, it was all about staying controlled. And, you know, I train nine times a week in the pool uh, for that exact moment, you know, 50 weeks of the year. So um, I've got a lot of confidence and belief in myself that I'm able to, to be one of the fitter people in the race. And if I swim my own race, that I'll be um, around the mark and... Yeah, just got to back yourself in on the race day, don't you? Yeah. You swim with your eyes closed. Do you do your tattoos with your eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> we've got a couple of images here. I think this is the first we've got, what, 2016 might be uh, over there. Without, as What do you say is kind of your journey that is, you know, your skin's the canvas. I'm thinking of doing it. We've got not enough, not enough story to fill the canvas. <laughs> but there you are with the tats. How's that going? You've had recent additions as well. Yeah, I think it's a forever growing um, journal, um, which for some people they love. Um, most of my family members, they don't appreciate nearly as much as me. I know my mum and grandma still have uh, almost tears every time I have a new tattoo, but, um, yeah, it's it's forever growing. That's the a great tuna, one there. Is that, the, also, the is that a port, yeah, the Port Lincoln one? Is that the tuna? Yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, southern bluefin tuna, and it's um, going close to biting Freddie Mercury's foot off there. <laughs> I'm running out of space and everything, kind of getting jammed, jammed up into it. Uh, there's one of my mates tattooing me. I've, uh, I've had some interesting people tattoo me. If you, well, if you can get into tuna when you finish swimming, there's a fair bit of money in that. You'd know a few people around Port Lincoln that'd have some big mansions, wouldn't you, Kyle? <laughs> I do, and uh, I have got a four-metre tinny now that um, is capable of catching tuna, I hope, so I'm hoping to uh, join into that industry. Oh, Kyle Chalmers, we could talk to you for hours. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally about swimming. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Absolutely spectacular effort. We'd love to see you in the studio at some point. Appreciate it. I'd love to be in the studio, especially um, with my, one of my idols, Fitzy, as well. It'd be great uh, fun. <laughs> and, and your Bunnings hoodie on as well. I love That's it. Right. I love Fitzy it. played football with your dad, of course. That's right. <laughs> there he is. The great man, Kyle Chalmers. Thank you so much, buddy.